So we are very lucky. We have with us today, Dr. Jeanette Crenshaw, who's a professor at Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center School of Nursing in Lubbock, Texas, and teaches in the Doctor of Nursing Practice Program. Jeanette is a nurse, educator, and a researcher. Dr. Crenshaw earned a DNP in Executive Leadership in Nursing, an MSN in Administration and Management, and a BSN in Nursing. Her professional work focuses on promoting evidence-based leadership, maternity, breastfeeding, and pre-operative fasting practices. Throughout her career, she has been recognized for her expertise on healthy birth and breastfeeding practices and skin, to skin care after birth, making her the perfect speaker for today's webinar, which will focus on the benefits of skin to skin care. In her spare time, Dr. Crenshaw loves to dance and go for walks with her husband and spend lots of time with her three adult children and her three grandchildren. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jeanette Crenshaw as she presents this webinar on skin to skin care. Welcome, Dr. Crenshaw. Good morning, and thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be with all of you, and I applaud all of you for the important work you're doing for mothers, babies, parents, families. So uh, I'm going to begin by uh, sharing my screen, and I want to share this one. So let me move this out of the way, and you'll have to tell me if you can see my PowerPoint. Can you see my PowerPoint? We can see Wait. it. Okay, I'm gonna put it in presenter and it, of course I'll have to swap. Okay, so I love talking about skin to skin care. That is, in recent years, the area of research that I have focused on, and in particular, I have focused on research on skin-to-skin -skin care that begins during cesarean surgery without interruption. So not taking the baby to the warmer, but immediately bringing the baby over to, um, over to mom's chest and leaving the, the baby there with mom uninterrupted. And my most recent study was on, a, um, on measuring health professionals' beliefs about skin-to-skin -skin care. My colleagues and I developed a valid and reliable tool to measure uh, so on a, uh, another time, I could tell you more about those studies, but the greatest honor of all is that these are my two grandsons, and I was present for each of their births. So the one that is, let me think, um, right above my name, that's my newest grandson. That's Reese Britton David. He's two and a half. And then the one above the logo next to the title of the presentation is Thomas Henry David, who is six. So I had the honor of being with Katie, uh, my oldest daughter, for both of those births. And so I, of course, got pictures of skin to skin. So um, I'll just say a little bit about Lubbock in case you're not familiar with Lubbock. I'm, this is a picture of my university. And what Lubbock is known for, which is really uh, different, I live in Dallas, Texas, and I commute to Lubbock when it's not COVID for uh, when the doctor of nursing practice students are on campus, which is about six times a year. But what L Lubbock is a desert and it's known for its dust storms. And I've been caught in one it's known for its oil wells, cotton, and gorgeous sunsets. So that's a little bit about Lubbock. So I'd like to begin right now with asking each of you to pause, take a few breaths to separate yourself from what you were doing before and bring you present into what you're doing now. And I'd like you to set an intention for this hour and a half or until uh, for the till this is over. And that intention can be anything. It can be personal, it could be about life, it could be about what about this this session. But I'd like you to set an intention for the next hour and a half. And I'm gonna give you a minute to do that. And I'd appreciate it if um, you'd write it down. Okay. 
So I'm going to ask a couple of you to go ahead and say out loud, um, unmute yourself and share what your intention is for this hour and a half, a few of you. Or I could call on you. Who's going to be the bravest person and be the first one to share something? Kathy? Kathy Huspeth Sheeran, would you share? Sure. My uh, intention is to listen and learn. Thank you. How about Wendy Urbai? Ur Arrive. Hi, good morning. Um, my intention would be just to do the best uh, for today. Thank you. Thank you. Erica Valencia. Uh, my intention would just be to be present. Thank you. Um, Elaine Carlos. Hi, good morning. Um, my intention is just to be present as well and learn and so that I can just share the benefits with my families when I'm in Roman. Thank you. All right, so now I'm gonna share my screen again. And if the rest of you would go ahead and put your intention in the chat, I'd appreciate it. So I'm gonna share my screen again and bring this PowerPoint back over. So thank you for um, taking a moment to reflect on what you'd like to have happen during this hour and a half. So we're gonna have a small group breakout now and it's only gonna be for five minutes. It's going to be really short. And what I want you to do in your small group is talk about what do you want to know about skin to skin care? And that could be skin to skin care, maternal newborn skin to skin care. It could be skin to skin care, postpartum. Um, what, what do you want to know the most about skin to skin care. And obviously we, we might not get to all 60 questions, but um, it would give us a sense of what you'd like to know. So set a recorder for your group and a few people will share. And then the recorder of those groups that didn't share, will put it in the chat. So right now, go ahead and um, you'll be broken into groups for just five minutes. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing while you're breaking into groups. So I bet you've done this before. And when you see your invitation, accept it. One or two questions from your group or as many as you'd like. And if we don't get to them all today, maybe uh, we could, I can connect with Martha and she'll help me answer the ones we don't get to. But would I, could I have a couple people share um, what their questions are about skin to skin as well as put it in the chat? I can share. Sure. My name is Marie, I'm with uh, Eminent Health and I was in group four. Some of the questions that came up was uh, skin to skin, the benefits of doing it before delivery and after. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, uh, another question came up in terms of uh, the benefits of dad doing skin to skin. Okay. And the other question was, what are some of the risk factors of practicing skin to skin? All right. Um, who else would like to share? I'll share. Um, I was in the You're welcome. One of them we talked about was like the benefits of skin to skin and milk production when mom is breastfeeding. And then also, um, we know at the hospital that they encourage it, but what are the risks or things that affect after they go home and they're not doing it? Okay. All right. How about one more? Me, I was in um, group two. And Another thing that wasn't mentioned already, um, how it can affect the child and how it relates to ACE scores and then um, and how it just works physiologically, just more in depth, I guess. Johanna, I, I wasn't sure what the second thing, what scores? Uh, adverse child 
childhood experiences, the ACE scores? You know what? I will have to get Martha or to tell me more about that because oh. I'm not knowledgeable about ACE scores. Oh, okay. That's fine. Um, but um, I bet I could answer it a little bit. Once. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Probably not a study that has connected it to ACE scores, but I, I'll do the best I can. Uh, that's all right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I, you're thinking. All right. So I'm going to share my screen again, and um, and now I will not be able to see you. So I'm um, going to launch it and. Switch swap and all right. So can everyone see the question mark? Yes, we yeah. can see it. Okay. So the the first thing I'll start with um, is a definition. And this is the definition of mother and newborn skin to skin care, which is obviously not the definition of father or, but skin to skin care is when mom cradles naked baby on bare chest. So that's a definition from the literature and it's repeated in numerous uh, published studies. Okay. So one of your goals, I feel certain as uh, health professionals who work with women and newborns and families and parents is to help promote breastfeeding because we know that it is the optimal choice for infant feeding. So helping women choose to breastfeed, helping women and their families get ready for breastfeeding and then removing the barriers that make them not successful. So, uh, Oh, why my mouse is okay so I wanted to show this picture because ultimately skin to skin should be offered to all women regardless of their feeding choice but it does have a significant impact on breastfeeding which also means that it has a significant impact on child survival around the world and this is a Texas Department of State Health Services poster advocating for uh, breastfeeding. And I love to show it because it's in a field of blue bonnets, which is our, our state flower. And we love blue bonnets in Texas. We love them. And so what better way to promote uh, breastfeeding is to have a mother nursing her baby in a field of blue bonnets. So um, I absolutely love um, this slide. So um, strategies for helping women choose breastfeeding, helping them be successful and get ready and then removing barriers or, or there's a myriad of them and we won't talk about all of them. But what I wanna mention is just a couple and, and this is my daughter while she was pregnant. And so obviously I had a vested interest in her and my grandson uh, being breastfed. Well, one of the ways that you can help women be successful is to have them take a prenatal childbirth and breastfeeding class, a high quality one, so that they're, you know that they're making an informed choice about breastfeeding. Another thing, you and this is a picture of my daughter on, on a labor ball preparing for birth, and this was me six years ago. Um, you notice that my hair color has changed quite a bit. Um, the other thing that helps women be successful with breastfeeding is choosing a birthplace that fully supports breastfeeding. And one way you know that they might be is that they are either designated as a baby-friendly 10-step hospital or they are on the journey to become baby-friendly. So that's another way you can help them choose breastfeeding, get ready for breastfeeding, and then remove barriers. And depending on where you see women, uh, the barriers that you help remove may vary. Another thing that you can do is help them clarify what is in their way. For instance, this is something that I like to use with prenatal women. Ask them to fill out this question. I would like to breastfeed my baby, but... And then you can ask, you can put that on the index card and go through each of them without a name and talk about it. And then if uh, you have partners, 
in the room, or it could be the father, you can say, I would like her to breastfeed the baby, but, and so that's another way, uh, a good way to end a time with the, with women is to get an idea of what they are, um, can, what, what's a barrier that they perceive. And then it gives you an opportunity to dispel myths. Another thing you can do to help people get ready is uh, to make sure that they know the keys to good milk production. And that's a whole nother talk we won't be going into. But um, one of the keys to helping women get ready is to be very mindful of the words you use. For example, avoid things like, well, if you try breastfeeding, well, try implies failure or avoid describing a myriad of problems and how to manage them. Women don't need to know how to manage every, every problem that might come up. They need to know where to get help if they need it. So be very mindful of the words and the language you use as you talk about breastfeeding. Um, we tend to make breastfeeding very complicated when we talk about it. And if the more simple we can keep it, the more women will feel that they're going to be successful, have self-efficacy. Not only do I want to do this, I believe I can do this. And that brings me as a um, Lamaze certified childbirth educator wanting to mention to you that keeping childbirth simple, not just breastfeeding, but keeping childbirth simple. And one way to do that is through the Lamaze six healthy birth practices. And I'm gonna go through them very quickly and end with number six, which is the one that I asked you to read. Um, and so the six healthy birth practices, number one is let labor begin on its own. And each one of these has an impact on whether mother gets immediate skin to skin with her baby. Um, walk, move around, and change positions throughout labor, plan for continuous support during labor, avoid interventions that are not medically necessary, avoid giving birth on the back, and follow the body's urge to push. And number six, which we'll spend the last half of our talk to get time together on, is keep mother and baby together. It's best for mother, baby, and breastfeeding. So let's just say a couple things about number one, let labor begin on its own. And one way to do that is to stop talking about due dates. Think of it as a due month. In fact, Princess Kate, who uh, you all may know who she is, she was one of the first that I heard of celebrity wise that began talking about a due month instead of a due date. Because we know that normal, that birth begins normally anywhere from 37 to 41 completed weeks or before 42 weeks. And so if someone thinks they're late because they're at 40 weeks, it can increase the risk that they're going to desire an induction. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say about that for now. The number two, walk, move around, change positions. Uh, position change can have a big impact on the progress of labor. And as labor progresses better, the more likely a, a woman is to be able to get skin to skin care. Uh, always emphasizing gravity, upright positions help bring the baby down versus laying flat on your back. And which essentially means you're pushing your baby uphill. Um, and I like this picture from my daughter's birth at a birth center where it shows her using a whole variety of tools to help labor. She's got her doulas, her nurse is down there on the floor, her husband is watching, rubbing her back, and she's got essential oils and artificial candles. So um, I love to show that picture. Number three, plan for continuous support. And we could talk about doulas for a whole session, but I love this quote from Dr. Kennel. If a doula were a drug, it would be unethical not to use it. And that's how much we know about skin, to, about the uh, value of doulas and, and healthy birth outcomes, and of course, to having skin to skin. 
Number four is avoid interventions that are not medically necessary. And this picture is just to remind you that once you do one intervention, you're opening the door for another intervention and another intervention, and it's a cascade of interventions. Number five, avoid giving birth on the back and follow the body's urge to push. So you want to avoid directed pushing. You want a woman to follow her body's urge so she's not holding her breath for a really long time and increasing the risk that her baby's heart rate will uh, be um, adversely impacted by her not breathing sufficiently. And again, using gravity for up uh, and this is an example of my daughter pushing during stage two uh, using an upright position gravity. Um, this is a midwife in China who gave me permission to use this picture. And this is how she birthed her baby in an upright position sitting on her husband's lap. And number six, where we'll focus our attention, keeping mother and baby together. It's best for mother, baby, and breastfeeding. So keeping mothers and babies together is nature's plan. All mammals do it. In fact, I would not want to be the nurse who comes up to this mama and says, oh, would you mind if I just take your baby over here to the warmer for a little bit to check your baby out? Uh, I do not think that I would be successful with that strategy. <laughs> um, so being together is nature's plan and eliminating unnecessary cesarean, uh, unnecessary separation is the responsibility of all of us. Dr. Niels Bergman, uh, a neonatologist in New Zealand, who you may have read some of his work, talks about zero separation, that we as health professionals should be advocating for zero separation. And you can see the baby with the, um, the symbol through it does not look happy. He's separated in a warmer compared to the baby who's with his mom. This is where babies were meant to recover from birth. And babies don't like it. They don't want to be separated from their mothers at birth. So the one way we're going to talk about getting breastfeeding started right is to focus on skin to skin care. <clears throat> but again, I want to emphasize that all women, regardless of their infant feeding choice, should be offered skin to skin care at the moment of birth. And when I do my research, I never choose only the women who plan to breastfeed because this is something that all women should have access to. This simple, no cost, feasible intervention should be uh, accessible to all women at the moment of birth. This is, the, this is a picture from one of my research studies and uh, a mother getting skin to skin care at the moment of birth. And we'll talk more about that. So the recommendation is immediate, uninterrupted skin to skin care for at least an hour. It doesn't mean you stop in an hour but it should be at least an hour. And the study I published in 2019, we watched women who had skin to skin care from the moment of birth for five hours. They were the uh, intervention group and we compared outcomes with women who had uh, skin to skin care that started after cesarean surgery and, uh, and continued for as long as the mother would like. And probably the biggest takeaway from this study is that it was feasible. It is feasible to do skin to skin care immediately during surgery and we had no adverse outcomes. So as I said, it's nature's plan. Moms and newborns are in a unique physiological state of heightened receptivity to each other. And it's called many things, the golden hour, the magical moment. It is such a disservice to mothers and newborns to miss this golden hour because it never happens again. Now, that doesn't mean when there's a medical reason for separation that, that we wouldn't want to prioritize medical necessity. In fact, 
the World Health Organization, UNICEF and Baby Friendly USA and almost all organizations of health professionals say if that mother is unable to, um, to provide skin to skin care that the father should do it. So mothers and babies are in this heightened receptivity to each other. Endorphins are released that reinforce mothering feelings and ultimately mothering confidence. And these elevated levels of stress hormones at the moment of birth increase a newborn's alertness. So he's able to look for mom, find the breast and attach by himself. So uh, we're gonna have another small group breakout and it's going to be really quickly. And when I know how many rooms uh, we have, we'll know whether you're going to be, uh, we wanna know what are the benefits of immediate and uninterrupted skin to skin care for mothers, newborns and parents. And many of you did some reading in advance. So I'm, want, I'm gonna have one group, a couple of groups talk about benefits for mothers, just from what you know or what you read. Another group will talk about benefits for newborns. Another group will talk about benefits for premature babies. And another group will talk about benefits for fathers slash parents. And this is my son-in-law and my uh, grandson, Thomas Henry David, who had to spend a little time in the NICU. That's why daddy has gloves on. Um, so, this is the time where I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I just want you in a group for five minutes. And once I know how many groups there are, I'll tell you which of the four you're going to talk about. Okay, so we have eight total groups. Eight total groups? Yeah. So that's easy, two, four, six, eight. So group one and two are gonna talk about benefits of skin to skin care for mothers. Group three and four are gonna talk about benefits of skin to skin care for newborns. Groups one, two, three, four, five and six are gonna talk about benefits of skin to skin care or let's call it kangaroo mother care for the NICU for the premature baby. So that's five and six. And group seven and eight are gonna talk about benefits for fathers slash parents because not everyone is the mother of the baby. So we are going to uh, just very quickly, just five minutes in a group. And so you, this is a brainstorm. Just throw out what you know. Okay, I wrote them in the chat. Can I just confirm with you? One and two benefits for mother, three and four benefits for newborns, five and six benefits for premature babies and seven and eight benefits for fathers slash parents. Yes. Okay, great. So everybody's got that in the chat now. Um, and when the room opens, you'll see your number. So that's how you'll know where you're going. Okay, see you back here in five minutes. All right. So um, someone from group one or two, could you share, um, let's, let's start, let's just do all six, eight groups um, and share two things that your group said about benefits for mothers uh, for skin to skin care. Two things. Group one. Who is in group one? I forgot. Can list to off names. Do you want me to start listing names? Oh, um, I, I'll go. My name is Fatima. I was in group one. Um, so we said it helps with bonding uh, mm -hmm. and it helps with breastfeeding. Excellent. Yes. And again, breastfeeding is key to child survival. So um, excellent. Okay. Somebody in group two, say two more that weren't already mentioned. Benefits for mothers. <clears throat> uh, Liana, I was in group two. Um, we determined that breastfeeding benefits for mom include it has a calming effect because of the, sorry, for skin to skin, it, it um, has a calming effect and it also reduces the stress levels. Thank you, that's excellent. And I'll just add a couple more. It reduces the duration of the third stage of labor, which ultimately can reduce maternal hemorrhage. Um, and so it reduces the risk of maternal hemorrhage. Um, it, and you mentioned this one, stress, anxiety, and the 
piece I want to add to that is reduces pain after a cesarean. Women who have skin to skin during a cesarean hardly notice that the cesarean is going on. And I, for one, would not like to be awake for major abdominal surgery. And to have this wonderful newborn distraction is just lovely. So um, uh, they, they, and it improves satisfaction with the birth experience. Okay, group three, you're talking about the benefits for newborns. Um, we said that it, it uh, stabilizes the body's, uh, the baby's blood sugar and also um, the temperature. All right, two biggies. Uh, uh, group four. Uh, we said it facilitates uh, breastfeeding rates as well as babies are less prone to infection. Excellent, because there, do we know why? You know why they're less prone to infection from getting skin to skin? I believe it's the colonization of bacteria. You got it, it you got it. They're exposed to mom's normal germs before the, all the hospital germs, hospital harmful microbes. So excellent, excellent. I would just say it, it, it also helps with newborn thermal uh, self-regulation reduces the stress of being born. It is stressful and um, cardiorespiratory uh, stability, including stabilization of O2 sets. And um, it leads to the nine instinctive behaviors that babies go through, which are uh, we'll talk about in a minute. So um, that's group, that's the newborn. Um, group five, um, what are some benefits of kangaroo mother care for the premature compromised baby? Um, they talked about a better responses to stress for the infants. And then also um, they usually are um, have better cognitive control and they gain weight a little bit faster. Um, we also talked about studies that we've seen like from Europe um, and Switzerland compared to the US, how they let the mom stay in the rooms um, when babies are premature and in the NICU and they have better outcomes um, as far as like gaining weight, feeding, and also they're less likely to um, have infant mortality because the moms get to like hold the babies and sleep with them in the same room instead of having to like go visit um, their premature children in the NICU. That was fairly comprehensive. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, um, number group six. What it, is there anything that you discussed that she hasn't already mentioned? Who's in group six? Is anyone from group six? able to add anything, or you can just say she covered it all. Paige, are, are Laura, are you trying to say something? You're oh, mute. Well, sorry, was the um, group six a premature one? Yeah. Yeah, so pretty much, yeah, she covered pretty much, you know, um, everything the same. She did, didn't she? I, the only thing I would add just off the top of my head, and we could do sessions and sessions on premature babies and skin to skin and kangaroo mother care. And, but I would say the other one is um, shorter time to effective latch, which you sort of covered anyway, because you said better breastfeeding outcomes and also uh, fewer NICU days. Okay, and since it leads to breastfeeding, lower incidence of necrotizing enterocolitis, which is associated with, um, um, is reduced with uh, breastfeeding. Um, and then who wants to talk about fathers and parents in general? Not the mothers or newborns, but fathers or parents. Uh, group seven? Um, we just talked about the bonding and attachment between baby and dad and also the same benefits as far as like regulating baby's body temperature through skin to skin with dad and just becoming, um, creating a more secure environment for baby and dad together. Nice, nice. Um, and group eight. Anything they didn't mention? It's okay because there's not a lot of literature on the benefits for fathers and parents, um, the non-mother, but 
Anything else? It was um, basically the same thing as what was mentioned earlier. Um, we also just talked about how um, it helps fathers like be more involved and more included. And then it'll probably like help them be more supportive towards breastfeeding um, success. Okay. See it more as a, like a team effort kind of thing. Cause a lot of dads, you know, sometimes um, they may feel like, oh, this, the mom, I can't breastfeed, the mom's gonna breastfeed. And, um, you know, so just having them more involved um, can probably, the mom will have a more of a success with breastfeeding. That was all. Great, great. And and probably the one study that um, I would cite would be the, the one that showed greater fathering competence. And that would be also true of mothers. I think I also like to differentiate, yes, skin to skin helps regulate temperatures. In fact, they've even shown that um, putting a baby skin to skin as it's being transported to the hospital with the with the people in the back of an ambulance helps stabilize the temperature and disruption from moving. But the mothers, the, the mothers have synchrony, uh, thermal synchrony between the breast and the baby skin temperature, which has not necessarily been demonstrated in the father. So as the baby gets colder, mom's breasts get warmer. As the baby gets warmer, mom's breasts get cooler to help stabilize the temperature. And so um, I'm gonna share my screen again now. And Okay, can you um, see my presentation? Yeah, we can see it. All right, so the last point I wanna make is that there are no data to show that improved maternal and newborn outcomes of immediate skin to skin care differ by birth mode, such as the newborn physiological stability, maternal and newborn temperature stabilization. So um, <clears throat> they, they even have some studies that show that moms who are skin to skin with their baby do not get cold during in the OR compared to um, mothers who don't have skin to skin are much more sensitive to the very cold temperatures that we use in the United States. Uh, in, in our ORs, which they do not do in China. Um, I, I, you may have figured out I spend quite a bit of time before COVID in China. So um, I just wanna point out what Baby Friendly says. It, in a step four is to facilitate immediate and, and that should say uninterrupted. Huge typo, facilitate immediate and uninterrupted skin to skin care and support mothers to initiate breastfeeding as soon as possible. That's what step four is. And I love this implementation guidance. It's a great source of evidence. And I put the link to the PDF for you. And step seven is to enable mothers and their newborns to remain together and practice rooming in 24 hours a day. So newborns also undergo nine instinctive species specific stages during skin to skin care. And um, <clears throat> let's see what time it is. And this is my favorite quote from my 2010 study where one of the LND nurses said, really, our babies do this? I worked in LND for 15 years and never saw it before. And that's because we tend to be interventive and we don't leave the babies and moms alone. And all mammals know how to self-attach in most cases. So we wanna help parents choose skin-to-skin -skin care by giving them full information. And it's hard to imagine a mother who wouldn't want to do skin-to-skin -skin care knowing that it helps her baby stabilize his blood glucose, helps his oxygen, be stabilized, helps him to breathe more easily, to name a few. Um, of course, if there's any problems, we want to get them help by a competent person. Um, this is my daughter getting help from um, a lactation consultant. Um, but bottom line is, we want to help babies have and their mothers have a successful breastfeeding experience. And one of the first ways to make sure this happen is to, happens is to offer skin-to-skin -skin care and 
to incorporate the healthy birth practices so that there's no barriers that lead to the baby and mother needing to be separated. So the bottom line to everything we talked about today is one of the ways that we achieve what we want as health professionals is by offering skin to skin care, this low cost, feasible intervention that has so many positive outcomes. And ultimately, that leads us leads women to having a satisfying birth experience. This is one of my former students who did a study on skin to skin care and found reduced admissions to the NICU for observation um, with the use of skin to skin care during cesarean surgery. And I'm using this picture with her permission. And we want a healthy baby and we want a healthy mom and we want confident parents and improved breastfeeding outcomes. So that is the end of what I prepared for you. And my email address will be, uh, I'll send a copy of the, the slides to Martha, um, minus a few pictures I'm not permitted to share, and you, you will have them. And now I will look at questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And shall I begin with the questions that were posted at the beginning of our time together? Is that okay? Raise your hand if that's okay. Yes? All right. All right. So um, I'm going to move to the top because it's right after, let's see, questions. Um, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Okay. What amazing intentions. So how to support mothers who experience a cesarean? And one of the best ways is to begin with skin to skin care and have it be uninterrupted. Women who have birth by cesarean, and sadly that's one in three women around the world based on current global cesarean rates are vulnerable to having skin to skin care either withheld, delayed, or interrupted. So that really makes them a vulnerable population. So um, one of the best way, way to support mothers is to make sure that they get skin to skin as soon as possible. And if you're in a situation where you don't see mothers till after the birth, you can still be an advocate for this for future births and in your practice setting. Um, Um, how long to see the effects physiologically of how it works? Well, the most effect uh, based on the myriad of studies that, that have been done is a minimum of one hour. So I would say a minimum of one hour and we don't understand physiologically exactly how this works, but there's something very uh, profound that happens when the mother and newborn are skin to skin during that first hour. Um, and I apologize, I can't answer how it affects A scores. Um, how long should parents do it for? Uh, a minimum of an hour. But if we were talking about breastfeeding practices and we were dealing with problems, the first line of defense is skin to skin care. The first remedy for any breastfeeding issue is to put the baby skin to skin. So that applies throughout postpartum. Skin to skin not only prevents breastfeeding problems, but it fixes breastfeeding problems. So encouraging parents to spend time skin to skin often, and particularly mom is gonna help prevent breastfeeding problems. And skin to skin also improves parenting confidence. So we want them to do it often. Um, I think we've talked about recent studies of the benefits of skin to skin, and you did review it in the article that you read. There are articles coming out every day 
I mean, it's, but I think the number one thing, of course, I'm very focused on the cesarean mom. The number one thing is that it's feasible and it can, it can be done with no, we, we had no um, adverse reactions in our intervention group that had skin to skin uninterrupted for five hours. Now, I'm not saying every mother should do skin to skin care uninterrupted for five hours. They should do it for a minimum of an hour. Um, can skin to skin be done with COVID? Yes, it can. It's, it's up to the mother, really. Uh, they say that if mother wants to be not separated with from her baby, she should keep the baby six feet away from her, except when she's breastfeeding, which does that make a lot of sense to you? I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. She could double mask or mask. I, I don't know if there's evidence to support double masking, but for sure masking. And it really should be up to the mother. Everyone in the um, labor and delivery area is already exposed and should have PPE that's protecting them. So I would say um, it, that there are there's nothing to say that women who have COVID cannot be skin to skin with their baby. And for sure, it should not interrupt breastfeeding. I just downloaded three articles from Breastfeeding Medicine, which is the official journal of the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine, an international organization of medical professionals um, who study breastfeeding. And, it, and again, it was like, they should, you know, pregnant women should get COVID vaccine, pregnant women should have skin to skin, they should breastfeed. So, um, can skin to skin be done for micro babies in the NICU? There are NICUs where they start while the baby is still on a ventilator. Absolutely. And um, long-term effects of babies that were held skin to skin versus babies that weren't, that's a very hard one to study because you have to look at, I really can't randomize them. I can't, because it would be unethical. I can't say, okay, you're going to get skin to skin, um, and you're not, and we're going to see if there's a difference in A scores at blah, blah, blah. That would be an unethical study. The reason I was able to randomize skin to skin during cesarean is because the ones that weren't in the intervention group were um, getting standard care, which they started skin to skin as soon as the mother was moved off of the operating room uh, table and onto the recovery room bed in the OR. So that was the difference immediate during surgery versus immediately after surgery. And we could do that ethically because the other babies got standard of care. Um, so can you assist in latching them on or are you supposed to let them do it on your own? Well, I would defer to the World Health Organization and Baby Friendly USA and, the, um, and UNICEF and say, you are to assist mother in helping attach her baby to the breast. You don't have to say, no, 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 let the baby do it herself. But if moms have seen that video, they may want the baby to do it themselves and babies doing it themselves find a perfect latch. So it just is really up to moms and all moms should get to see that video. All moms should get to. Um, let's see. I have observed when the deliver, they took him and put him in the heater and did all the tests. Then she held them and they started breastfeeding. But that process, um, no, I, there is no evidence to say that a baby, unless there's a medical reason, should be taken to the warmer to be assessed. They should be assessed on mother's chest. In fact, uh, Procedures such as um, a heel stick to test glucose have been shown to be less painful while a mother is and baby are skin to skin. So there is no evidence to support routinely taking a baby over and assessing them and then bringing them back. And it delays the start of skin to skin, which should be immediate and uninterrupted. Um, so skin to skin for the first six weeks, three months, what length of time? I think that's up to the mom. Obviously, it's a remedy for breastfeeding problems. Women enjoy it. Fathers enjoy it. Parents enjoy it. If it's an adoptive baby, parents enjoy it. So it's really up to the mother. But 
the most evidence is on the first hour and then the early postpartum period where uh, mother and baby should stay together for their, uh, rooming in. But uh, my one of the women in my study in 2010 was interviewed and I didn't have time to show you that video, but she says, you know, and she, she wasn't even breastfeeding. And she's like, you know, every time my baby is fussy, I just put him skin to skin and, and he settles right down, you know, so they, they learn from that experience and, and they are more confident as parents. When does mom start breastfeeding after, after birth? When baby says so, when baby's ready. So there's no time. Step four of the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative um, used to say, help mothers initiate breastfeeding within one hour. The 2018 guidelines no longer say that. They say, begin, um, do skin to skin immediately and uninterrupted and then support mom when her baby shows signs of readiness to help her attach. So it, it, it should be up to the mom and the mom doing it with the support of the health professionals around her trusting the process. Um, and I, I, I know some people asked about risks. People worry health professionals worry that the baby will get cold, but I think we've got enough studies out now that we can really put that one to bed. If a baby is getting cold skin to skin, there's something wrong. There's something physiologically wrong. And so I would say, um, I cannot think of any risks. Uh, I, you would, a, ba a sick baby needs to be stabilized. A sick mother needs to be stabilized and, and there are times when it cannot be done, but it should be offered as soon as possible, uh, as soon as the mother and baby are ready. So um, I think I got all the questions in the chat. We have about eight minutes. Does anyone have a question that they wanna ask out loud that I haven't addressed? I'm, I'm sure there's a million of them because we only spent a little over an hour on this and we could have talked about it works up all day. Is a risk that mom could fall asleep with the baby skin to skin? Yes, yes, that is a, I'm glad you brought that up because this is an example of one of my colleagues hospitals and they go around and every day they visit all the mothers that are in labor and they tell them how important it is to, um, put the baby skin to skin and spend time that way. But they also tell the support person that mom's gonna be tired and you need to help her make sure that, um, that she and the baby are safe. A lot of moms are on medications that make them sleepy, they, especially if they had a cesarean. So we should monitor we should monitor carefully and um, rarely um, babies, a baby will have a um, physiologic collapse and it's rare, it doesn't happen very often, but it means that, and that's not a result of skin to skin, it's just something that happens after birth, rarely, just like many things happen rarely. But the, our responsibility as health professionals are to be monitoring to be watching, to be checking frequently. Um, there are babies that have fallen and have been dropped. And uh, what makes it especially serious is the beds are so high, they don't make beds that are really conducive to mothers and babies. We make beds conducive to health professionals. And so if we had beds lower to the ground, if we had a soft floor, um, and making sure if, if father's tired, because he's been up all night too, that maybe grandmother can be there. If mom fell asleep, I would not wake mom up or move the baby. I would make sure she has somebody there with her. And that's what my colleague tells all the parents that someone, so mom can do as much skin to skin as possible, someone should stay with mom. But it's the same during surgery. Um, the, the nurse who is the circulator 
should not be responsible for the newborn, assessing the newborn. There should be another nurse that is in there assigned to the baby until the circulator is finished her responsibilities in the operating room and can safely take care of two patients instead of one. Um, you know, I, I would love, Mike, I'd like to ask my colleagues at Healthy Children about that question that someone just posted about, do they go through the nine stages with adoption? And I would guess, this is a guess, this is an educated guess, but I don't know that they would. And especially if mother has pumped and been inducing lactation, um, they the baby may go through the nine stages. I, I, I can't think of a reason why they wouldn't. Um, moms that know that they're having a cesarean birth should advocate for skin to skin during doctor visits. Yes, yes, there are way, and do it again in the operating room and do it again because their doctor might not be there. Somebody, uh, the doctor's partner might be there or maybe they're having a birth at a um, hospital where they have different professionals, health professionals that assist with the birth compared to who sees some prenatally. So mothers and the partner should advocate for themselves. Yes, yes. Like I said, women are having cesarean or vulnerable to having cesarean, having skin to skin withheld. So any, any questions, you can come off mute to ask a question. You don't have to put it in the chat. If I didn't, is there a question, anything burning I didn't touch on? I know we didn't go into great depth, but is there any burning thing you'd like to ask me? Um, I have a question. Um, is it so Yes, um, so I've seen um, some videos where after, right after birth, um, they place the baby more like on the stomach, more lower on the, the mom and do like they do help them, well, let them do the, it, do they call it a breast crawl? Uh-huh, that's the same thing as the nine instinctive stages. As yeah. In the center, like where is the best place to place them, like on the tummy, the, in the chest? You know, typically what happens is until they've cut the umbilical cord, and especially if you're going to wait three to five minutes to cut the umbilical cord, the baby can't reach mom's chest because the, the umbilical cord is still attached. So um, th that's why you see them on the lower abdomen. And once the umbilical cord has been clamped and they often move the baby up and put it the baby between the breasts. Obviously with a cesarean, the, the, um, the, um, whoa, why don't, I can't think of the word, the drape is in the way. And so they place the baby horizontally across mom's chest this way and try to make as much contact as possible. Okay, so either way is yeah, yeah. I, I mean, usually once they cut the cord, they move and vaginal birth, say, put the baby between the breasts. Yeah, I actually want to piggyback what Elizabeth said. Um, I've seen those videos too. The, it's the breastfeeding video. <laughs> so you put um, baby on mom's tummy and then uh, baby will start to crawl and try to find the breast to breastfeed. And I think that's why that was my question is, um, are you supposed to immediately, as soon as baby is born, you start breastfeeding? No. That, that's like no. what the video looks like. No, in fact, it's unusual. It, you know, the average time to latch is 60 minutes, which means that some do it faster and some take longer. Did you see the one from my study that it was 85 minutes before the baby latched? So um, putting the baby on the abdomen and letting the baby move his way up is fine or putting the baby in between the two. I mean, there's no rules about it. The, the one rule I would say is immediate, uninterrupted skin to skin care with as much of the baby's body touching mother's body. Martha, I think we're out of time. I bet there were many good questions I didn't get to. 
Yeah, I, I really appreciate this so much. Um, and I think this is really useful. I know everybody, if you have to go, um, understandable, but uh, if you have like another minute or two to kind of wrap up, feel free to stick around. Um, but no, I, I think this was really great. I, I really appreciate you going through all of these questions, taking the time. Um, we got through everything in the chat. And um, if, as you're digesting all this information, um, if you have other questions, we, we have Dr. Crenshaw's email in those slides. So I'll send that out to everybody. We'll make sure that you have a way to contact her. Um, I don't think this is the last you'll be seeing of her either. She's a great partner for us and has a lot of really in interesting, helpful information to share. So. Um, I expect we'll have her as a presenter again in the future so that you can ask more questions about all different aspects of the healthy birth practices. So let's give her um, a virtual round of applause before the end of the year we go. Yeah, thank you so much. Really appreciate all of your, um, your expertise on this. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. I'm very privileged to have been invited to be with all of you and, and I honor your work. I. I'm so impressed with what you do every day. Thank you. Um, Martha, will you stay on a minute? Of course. Thank you, everybody. Um, feel free to, to head out. I'll send the slides and um, the evaluation link is in the chat, but I'll send it again. Just um, make sure you fill that out for us so we can plan future webinars for you. Thanks, everybody, for your time and have a good rest of your week. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.